patuloy na nagbibigay serbisyo. Pagasa at saya. GMA Regional TV, kapuso ng bawat Pilipino. Afternoon. This is your GMA Regional TV Weekend News, the biggest, the latest as local news matters. Jasmine Gabriel Galban. I am CJ Torida. Joan Punsoy, broadcasting live from the GMA Complex in Dagupan City. We'd like to welcome our Kapuso viewers from Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao, as well as our Kababayans all over the world watching us through GMA Pinoy TV and GMA News TV International. This afternoon, we will be joined by GMA RTV Dagupan Balitang Amyanan Correspondent, Ivy Hernando. Luan May Rondina of RTV Cebu Balitang Bisdak. And Clyde Makaskas of GMA RTV Dava 1 Mindanao. Don and uh, Jasmine partners, we have a full lineup today as we will also be joined by our RTV counterparts from other regions. We will be joined by Zen Kilantang of GMA RTV Iloilo. One Western Visayas and Ring Palino of GMA RTV Bicol. For the headlines, rice importation will continue according to Department of Agriculture. Eight year old son shot his own father in Negros Occidental. Several classrooms deemed not safe after quake. PDRRMO continues to assess damages in quake hit areas. More than 69,000 animal bite cases recorded in Region 6. Newest warship of the Philippine Navy visited Cebu. And GMA Regional TV recognized as best regional TV network. LTO conducts nationwide operations versus traffic violators. Let's have more in Rain Palinas live report. Rain. CJ, following President Rodrigo Duterte's order to strictly implement the country's traffic laws, the Land Transportation Office, together with other concerning agencies, conducted a one-time big-time operation against violators. In Naga City, authorities said they prioritized the apprehension of overspeeding and overloaded vehicles. A priority po itong mga trucks, mga jeeps na nagpapakarabit, may mga nagtatap load. Para sa safety, kang satuyang mga motorista, mga riding public, as in mga iba pa. Ano? Mararani man lang po kaya ang biyay may. In Iloilo, the Land Transportation Office Region 6 also conducted a one-time big-time operation in the province. Out of 196 vehicles inspected, 65 were given citation tickets. Most common violations were not using of seatbelt, illegal parking, unregistered vehicle, and failure to carry ORCR. Trucks were also checked to make sure that they are not overloaded. In San Fernando City, La Union, LTO Region 1 set up vehicle checkpoints to strictly monitor for overloaded vehicles. 
CJ, this orchestrated one-time big-time operation in different provinces is in response to multiple vehicular accidents that resulted to numerous deaths due to overloading and other traffic infractions. CJ? Thank you, Rain Palino. PDRRMO continues to assess damages in quake hit areas. John D. Esteban files this report. Barangay Sibonga was the most affected village with a 5.9 earthquake shook Kadingilan Bukidnon. This is what we saw upon arriving in Purokwan, one damaged house after another, as most of the houses are made of light materials. The strong tremor took down the walls of Tatay Poncha's kitchen. Yaasa mo natulog gabi eh. Dito ra sa gawas ma'am. Kay adlok naman mi ubasig mo utro niya og kauyog. Niya karong unyang gabi asa man mo mag kuan tenen. Basin adto siguro mi ani sa among covered court. Mura magi puntol. Puro tabi og Tina po mi ka klaro kay ing abog mang cemento da are ning karang mga abog bitaw sa lublak. Ing atbog man Logos kay maklaro, de dali may tinggawas. The legislative building of Kadingilan is now restricted as it also suffered damage. Employees are currently holding office outside since they are not allowed to enter the building for safety purposes. Dili po gina ito matawag siya nga total damage tungod kay ipainspeak pa namo sa itong taga DPWH, ang mga engineer. Ang among municipal building, wala ko mag-declare o... Wala'y trabaho tungkol kay okay pa man siya. In Maramag, Bukidnon, the Barangay Hall in Camp 1 was not spared from the earthquake. Floor tiles were damaged, walls were destroyed. Fearing that another strong quake will hit, staff brought the things outside. Dili yun, pasod lang sa. Kay ilang man na inspeksyon gabi, delikado. Basig na ay after siyak. Some 60 quake-affected families in Maramag, Bukidnon fear that they might not survive another earthquake, so they chose to stay in makeshift tents. This nine-month pregnant woman opted to endure the heat under their tent rather than stay in her house damaged by the earthquake. Some children also got sick. One of them is Nanay Leticia's grandchild. Meanwhile, in Don Carlos Bukidnon, patients of Don Carlos Doctors Hospital and Simbolan Santo Nino General Hospital stayed in a gymnasium after they evacuated following the strong quake. More or less 300 na sila. Pero ang uban na balhin na sa ilahang uh, hospital. Ang simbula ni is hindi siya pwede masugla na. Together with cameraman Rudy Mel Colmenares, I am John D. S. Teban for GMA Regional TV. Several classrooms deemed not safe after the quake that hit Cagayan de Oro City and Zamboanga City. Clyde Makaskas will give us the details live. Clyde? Joanne, according to FIVOKS, Kadingilan Bukidnon is the epicenter of the earthquake which struck Monday evening. The 5.9 magnitude earthquake that hit Bukidnon Monday night has affected nearby areas like Cagayan de Oro City where an intensity 4 tremor was felt. Residents and shoppers immediately evacuated the buildings as they ran for safety. The following morning, Personnel from CDRRMD, Office of the Building Official, and City Engineer's Office conducted an inspection of several buildings and structures. Minor damage was found in eight school buildings in the city, namely Kugman Elementary School, Kugman National High School, Cagayan de Oro City National High School, East Gusa National High School, PN Roa National High School, PN Roa Elementary School, Balulang National High School, and Pagatpat Elementary School. Ang amo nakita sa tibok panawagan po mga hairline na nani. So, doon na po ikatong mga building sa unang na yung mga hairline, nida ko gamay. Kaya comes out to intensity 4. In Zamboanga City, after the structural integrity inspection conducted by DepEd, cracks were discovered in three buildings of different public schools in the city. Therefore advised not to be used. 
Meanwhile, the DepEd engineer will determine if the said buildings need to be repaired through retrofitting or be totally abandoned or destroyed. Classes of the affected students have also been transferred to other school buildings. Dangerous yan. Paano pag wall yan, pag nag-collapse o ceiling, ganun talaga yung mangyari. Hindi talaga gamitin yun. Minimizing ano, risk, that is risk reduction. The Special Science Building of Putik Elementary School is one of the defective buildings which has eight classrooms. Efforts were made to stabilize the rooms but to no avail. This building is also more than 20 years old. Yung eight classes na affected po, four shifting bases po sila ngayon. As you can see po yung covered court natin sa baba, so gumawa din po sila ng temporary classroom just to address the needs of the children po. Up to now, the CDRMD are still consol consolidating damage reports. Joanne. Thank you, Clyde Makaskas. In Sipalay City, Negros Occidental, an 8-year-old son shot his own father. Adrian Prieto tells us more. A 39-year-old man was shot three times by his 8-year-old son inside their house at Barangay San Jose in Sipalay City. Based on police investigation, the victim found his son playing with his... A 39-year-old man was shot three times by his 8-year-old son inside their house at Barangay San Jose in Sipale City. Based on police investigation, the victim found his son playing with his 38 caliber revolver. The man, who was reportedly drunk, kicked his son in the face, prompting the child to shoot his father. <laughs> The boy, together with his two siblings, are under custody of the local DSWD. Their mother works in Manila and has already arrived in Sipale City to see her family. In Bacolod City, a 13-year-old boy was hammered to death by his own father who was perceived to be mentally ill. The incident occurred in their house in Barangay Tangu, Bacolod City, while the victim was sleeping. <laughs> Relatives of the suspect claim the father is suffering from depression and a nervous breakdown. Despite that, the family filed parasite case against the suspect. A 47-year-old man, Rosendo Panaman, hacked to death with his wife, Marivic Panaman, at their house in Bayambang, Pangasinan. According to the police report, the couple's son heard his mother calling for help. The responding police tried to pacify the suspect, but were in turn attacked by Panaman using a jungle bolo. This prompted the officers to shoot the suspect, killing him. I am Adrian Prietos for Jimmy Regional TV. Four soldiers, including a female official, died while seven others were wounded in a vehicular accident in Katbalogan City, Samar. The incident happened early this week where a wing van truck bound for Katbalogan City rammed the tricycle in a pickup in Barangay Apolonia, Parana, Samar. Parana's Police Chief Police Major Ruel Baganes identified the victims who died as 2nd Lieutenant Chari Fe Cabanog, Staff Sergeant Crisostomo Gabuay, Sergeant Sherwin Antonio and Sergeant Romel Ombrog, all members of the Philippine Army. Of the seven wounded, three were military men, three were students and the tricycle driver. According to police investigation, the truck driver accidentally hit the back part of the tricycle upon reaching a slope part in Barangay Apolonia. The driver died serving his van to the other side and in the process rammed into an army personnel transport pickup bound for Tacloban City. Due to the impact, the wing van drugged the pickup and its passengers before it hit a house on the roadside. Wounded victims were brought to the Samar Provincial Hospital in Katbalogan while the wing van driver surrendered to the PNP station in Paranas. The Philippine National Police starts crackdown against vape users. More in this report. 
The Philippine National Police has started its nationwide crackdown on e-cigarettes or vape following the directive of President Rodrigo Duterte to arrest users vaping in public places. In San Carlos City, Pangasinan, police inspected vape shops and intensified their visibility in public places. Sa ngayon, uh, in-inform natin lahat ng sa ganun ay malaman nila and afterwards, implement na natin yung uh, uh, batas. In Iloilo City, vape shop owners said that price of vape products might increase after PRRD banned the importation of vaping devices. Despite the order that vape users caught smoking in public will be arrested, vape users said that they support the president's directive. In Cebu City, PNP Region 7 is set to go after vape and e-cigarette users in public places. The Cebu City Council will pass an ordinance that would regulate the use of vape. Kung ano yung mangyayari sa kanila once na gumamit sila ng e-cigarette o ng vape, katulad ng sinasabi natin na first uh, na-reported na lang injury, vape-related lang injury dito sa Central Visayas. I am Jasmine Gabriel Galban for GMA Regional TV. Meanwhile, in Swal, Pangasinan, fillings of bangus fingerlings in fish cages is suspended by LGU. More details in IV Hernando's live report. Ah! Ah! IV? Ah! Jasmine, Pangasinan is one of the largest producers of bangus and is known for its variety of seafood. However, the province is now experiencing a crisis over supply, a spike in prices, and red tide infested areas. Coastal waters of Sual, Pangasinan is still positive for red dye toxins based on a recent advisory by the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources or BFAR. The presence of multiple fish cages is one of the possible reasons why the coastal water was contaminated by red tide, which according to BFAR is commonly caused by pollution or other contaminants like feed residues. And to avoid pollution, the local government of Swal suspended the filling of bangus fingerlings in all fish cages. Babakita natin isang area ng Marikudjuson para doon sa parang, re, parang re, replacement na area para maging maganda yung maflaplasing, may plasing sila. But some bangus growers do not believe that this is a solution and will only affect the supply of bangus. Kung marami na nakapaglagay, Hindi, epektado. Pero pag wala, kukunti pa rin, epektado. The local municipal agriculture office assures the public that there is a sufficient supply of bungus this holiday season. In Dagupan City, the price of fish and seafood products at the Magsaysay Fish Market increased from 50 to 80 pesos per kilo. From 300 pesos, Malaga is now 350 pesos per kilo. The price of talakitok also increased to 350 pesos, while the price of supo increased to 680 pesos from its previous price of 500. Pusit now costs 350 pesos, while the price of bangus ranges from 145 to 160 pesos. May igil warning tayo, kaya hindi nakakalaut yung mga uh, mangingisda natin, kaya talagang mataas yung presyo. Fish vendors are also experiencing low demand for their products. Mahal. Walang ang supply. Saan kayo nahihirapan? Doon sa supply o yung demand nito? Sa pagtitinda rin, walang dumarating na buyer. Because of the red tide infestation in Suhal, Pangasinan, the Gupan City is strictly monitoring shellfish products entering the city. Jasmine Authority says that the price hike in fish and seafood products usually happens during this season. Concerning the transportation of shellfishes, Authority says that part of their monitoring is the inspection of auxiliary invoice to protect the consumer or the public in consuming red tide infested products. Jasmine? Thank you, Ivy Hernando. Sixty-three percent of Bangsamoro children among the poorest in the country. Agenda to improve the lives of Bangsamoro youth discussed in Cotabato City. Teko Campo has more. In a theatrical performance, the Bangsamoro youth depicted their situation in conflict areas. This is part of the 30th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child in Barm. During the occasion, 
the Bangsamoro Children's Agenda was presented which calls for the government to address issues on education, poverty, peace and order, corruption, and access to information. Based on the report, 63% of the Bangsamoro children are considered living below poverty level and among the poorest families living in the country today. About 260,000 of these children were not able to attend school. Only one out of five children are able to enroll for education. There are also 300,000 children that are chronically malnourished and stunned. The convention recognizes that children are human beings and more than just passive objects of care and charity. During the forum, five children were recognized for their good deeds in school, in their homes, and within the community they live in. 11-year-old Lawrence Bellion from Dato Abdullah Sanki in Maguindanao wants to change their condition by working hard. With a new political system and a form of government under the barm, they can only but hope for a new and better order with the provisions of the organic law. The Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament supports the protection of children through legislation. The children are uh, lagging behind in many social indicators, many child development indicators. Together with cameraman Jojo Solarte, I am Teco Campo for GMA Regional TV. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Rise importation will continue according to Department of Agriculture. King Guevara has more. Since the implementation of rice tarification law in March, palay prices declined affecting local farmers. Last Tuesday, President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the suspension of rice importation. Angat uh, may importation maapektado ang presyo kasi ma malaking bagay na uh, hindi makapag-compete yung produkto ng uh, nating Pilipino na farmer. However, Secretary William Dar of Department of Agriculture clarified that the government will not suspend rice importation but will tighten food safety measures to control the entry of cheap grain that is hurting the income of the local farmers. Despite the drop of price of palay, the National Food Authority in Eastern Pangasinan says the buffer stock of palay is enough and they will continue to buy grain from local farmers. As of now, kasi ang ubutos lang sa amin is bumili kami ng palay sa, um, sa mga farmers. So yun ang ginagawa, local procurement. In San Fabian, Pangasinan, a group of farmers held a rally calling for the immediate revocation of the rice tarification law, which allegedly resulted in low prices of palay. Ang binta namin ngayon ay yung ready to mail 1450. Pero samantalang noong 2018, ang binta namin sa bigas ay sa palay ay 23 pesos. I am King Guevara for GMA Regional TV. Two earthquake victims died at evacuation centers in Magsaysay, Davao del Sur. Rial Soroche files this report. This is the situation in evacuation centers in Magsaysay, Davao del Sur. Several children and senior citizens have fallen ill with colds and fever. Pagkakadlawan, bugnaw na po. So ikaw, nagsakit na yung ulo. Oo, hindi na ko katulog siya. Hindi ka katulog? Oo, bo. In Balnate Evacuation Center, according to Nurse Kenneth Caballero of DOH Region 11, the evacuees are vulnerable to illness like the flu virus, but he assured that they are monitoring the evacuees' health status and will provide medical attention 24-7. Sir, namin the repair me, sir, every day. Tapos, ginamonitor na mo ang mga bakwit kung unsa ilahang gibati. However, an old woman and a baby passed away at evacuation centers this week. 86-year-old Pandit Awe succumbed to pneumonia at the Balnate evacuation site, while a five-month-old baby girl fell ill and died due to the cramped living conditions inside their tent at Barangay Poblacion. Dili lang init, dili man may problema, pero init man good ang tent niya. Usa pa, naman siya sakit daan. Niya, nasamot na. Kaya para lang yun, pang, pang, malubong lang ako niya kung anak karong Domingo. Pero tadyong paita naman kahimtang karong sera. 
the provincial government of Davao del Sur has assigned several medical teams to conduct health consultations in different evacuation centers. 25%, 30% mga taong puyo sa, sa actual magkasakit. Pero kung mayong kag mawikin na resistance, halos lang tanan. Together with cameraman Melchor Awing, I am Real Soroche for GMA Regional TV. DENR shuts down 2.6 hectares open dump site in Tagbilaran City, Bohol. Nico Sereno for the report. A cease and desist order was issued by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources against the Tagbilaran City government for operating an open dump site which is prohibited under Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. The closure of the 2.6 hectare open dump site in Barangay Dampas was personally supervised by DENR Undersecretary for Solid Waste Management and Local Government Unit Concerns, Benny Antiporda. Of course, uh, we will be uh, supporting them also. Mukhang ano nga eh, hindi ko na hinihintay na mamalimos sila. Uh, nakahanda na po yung pondo rin namin para sa kanilang safe closure and rehab na itong open dump na ito. No? According to Antiporda, their office received complaints alleging that some residents got sick due to the dump site. The dump site was ordered closed back in 2017. Garbage that were thrown in the dump site included plastics, diapers, styrofoam, and even hospital wastes. Antiporda added that the LGU's material recovery facility and outsource segregation failed. Local leaders were ordered to stop the operation of the dump site and do rehabilitation works in the area. It is an opportunity for us really to plan, to move, and to really do our best, do our part as the residents of Tagbilaran. Under the law, it is prohibited to operate and maintain an open dump site for garbage. I am Nico Sereno for GMA Regional TV. More than 69,000 animal bite cases were recorded in Region 6. Zen Kilantang has the details live. Zen? CJ rabies remains a public threat in Western Visayas as the number of human deaths caused by rabies increases. Despite the massive anti-rabies campaign of the government, the number of rabies cases in Region 6 continues to rise. The region is now second in the country with 25 human rabies deaths behind Central Luzon with a recorded of 31 number of deaths. DOH Region 6 recorded 69,841 animal bite cases from January to October this year. 18-year-old Patrick is among those who were bitten by a dog in Barangay Barrio Obrero Lapuz. <laughs> Patrick was given anti-rabies vaccine while the dog was turned over to the Department of Agriculture Regional Animal Diagnostic Laboratory for examination to determine if it is rabid. DOH 6 says those who were bitten, especially by stray cats or dogs, should immediately seek medical assistance to prevent the virus from entering the human body. Ang imo nga ito or ang imo kuring, ang vaccinated siya. Okay, kita ka balo, kasi nag-ara na siya sa incubation period. So kung ma-expose ka na dira, in Sigida, ugasan mo ang imong uh, exposed nga area sa panit mo or um, kagata or karosman or dilap. Meanwhile, the city veterinary office continues to hold stray cats and dogs in the city impounding area. According to city veterinarian Dr. Tomas Forteza, unclaimed stray dogs will be euthanized as per Republic Act 9482, also known as the Anti-Rabies Act of 2007. We don't want to do that. But this is the mandate of the law, and human health is more important, human lives is more important. That's why even with a heavy heart, naga decide ako yah kung patulogon niya kung di ko ay sing kaya yaman kami alangan nga pagutman mong ido. But after receiving negative reaction, especially in social media, the city mayor decides to stop the euthanasia of stray dogs. After nga may salakyan nata nga para idokop kag may dog pound nata. After then, maybe we can start. Uh, thinking about what else to do. A city ordinance mandating barangays to create temporary impounding facility was also reiterated. Currently, the city government is planning to create a dog pound and calls for help of animal advocacy groups to adopt stray dogs.
CJ, as the Department of Health continues to intensify its anti-rabies campaign, the public is also encouraged to be responsible pet owners. CJ? Thank you, Zen Kilantang. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. A 17-year-old man in Santa Barbara, Iloilo, killed in a hit-and-run incident. Jan Sala files this report. CCTV footage shows a man walking on the side of the road in Barangay Buyo, Santa Barbara, Iloilo. Moments later, a pickup coming from the opposite direction hit the man, sending him flying through the air. The victim, 17-year-old John Mark Subebe, was rushed to the hospital but later died while receiving medical treatment. According to the police investigation, Subebe was on his way to a nearby computer shop when the accident happened. Purbay nagabot ang tanod. Nagambal tana nga may nakita tana nga sarakyan nga pick up nga nagaisi-isi ang panaw. What saddens the victim's family is that the pickup driver did not bother to stop after the accident. Alam may pangarap pa kami. Pero nadura ng pangarap ko. Nawala na siya. Masakit sa kakagayin ng kanan. In another CCTV footage, the car was seen in the neighboring town of San Miguel. The driver was later identified as 26-year-old Michael Larosa of Barangay Panuran, Lambunao, Iloilo. Kay tungkol niya sa kadasigon sa iya dalagan pag uh, impact siya sa biktima, bisa nagminor lang sa wala agad wala ginaton makita. Larosa surrendered to Santa Barbara police a day after the accident. He refused to face the camera but he admitted that he did not see the victim and he immediately left the scene because he was scared that the residents might mob him. The driver is now facing charges of reckless imprudence resulting to homicide. The Land Transportation Office Region 6 suspended Larosa's driver's license for 90 days and issued a show cause order. Together with cameraman Cirilo Renduque, John Sala for GMA Regional TV. Newest warship of the Philippine Navy visited Cebu. Let's have a look with Luan Mayrondina's live report. Luan? Jasmine, Cebuanos were given the chance to roam around BRP Conrado Yap when the first modern general-purpose warship of the country arrived in Cebu this week and was open to the public for two days. Compared to other warships of the Philippine Navy, the Barco ng Republika ng Pilipinas or BRP Conrado Yap is the most modern warship of the country. Donated by the South Korean Army, the ship was refurbished and has anti-aircraft, anti-surface warfare, and anti-submarine capability. From 76mm to 40mm twin barrel to our Arbok to our uh, um, torpedo, they are all operating. According to Navy Captain Mark Buena, commanding officer of BRP Conrado Yap, the ship has a sonar that can detect submarines. Our news team was among those given access to roam around the different parts of the warship. Captain Buena said that he and his crew stayed in South Korea for four months to train in the maintenance and use of the facilities and warfare capabilities of the ship. The sailing crew was able to uh, know the uh, basics, and even uh, operational uh, level of maintenance and training. With the acquisition of the new warship, the Philippine Navy needs more personnel to serve as crew for other Navy ships being acquired by our country. To entice the youth to join the Philippine Navy, they opened the ship to the public to give a glimpse of life in the Navy. The BRP Conrado Yap was named in honor of Army Captain Conrado Yap, the most decorated Filipino soldier during the Korean War in the 1950s. Jasmine, BRP Conrado Yap has left the port of Cebu and has arrived the port of Bicol. It will stay in Bicol for three days as part of the conduct of mission of the show of the flag mission. Jasmine? Thank you, Luan Mayrondina. This time, let's have the latest weather update from uh, Pagasa Visayas weather specialist, Netherlands Saletrero. Good day, everyone, and here's our weather update for today. 
Tropical cyclone Sarah has further weakened into a low-pressure area and is now outside the Philippine area of responsibility. Meanwhile, we have Northeast Monsoon or Amihan that is affecting the northern and central Luzon, which is bringing cloudy skies with some isolated rain showers over the provinces of Aurora and Quezon. And meanwhile, for the rest of Luzon, down to Visayas and Mindanao, we'll only experience some partly cloudy to cl cloudy skies with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms, mostly in the afternoon or evening. And for a wind and sea condition, we have moderate to strong winds that is affecting Luzon with moderate to rough seas. While for Visayas and Mindanao, we'll have light to moderate winds with slight to moderate sea condition. And currently, we do not have any other low-pressure area that is inside the Philippine area of responsibility. For more weather updates, visit the Pagasa website at bagong.pagasa.dost.gov.ph and check out our social media accounts in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And that's our weather update for today. Reporting from Pagasa, Visayas, DOST, and Mactan, this is Netherlands Saletrero. Have a great weekend. A 19-year-old student in Bacolod City sells lumpia and fried shomai to pay for his tuition. Adrian Prietos tells us more. At 19 years old, 12th grader Joshua Mifa personifies dedication. Apart from his school books, Joshua also carries a heavy plastic container full of fried lumpia and shomai, which he sells to help finance his school needs. As early as 3 in the morning, Joshua and his mother fry at least a thousand of these yummy delights. By 8 a.m., he's already at school selling this to his schoolmates. For his fellow students, Josh is a source of inspiration and their lumpia treat. While the school administration says, Joshua's dedication sets a good example for other students. They also advise Joshua to be very cautious in the preparation of his food items. The fact is, I'm very proud of you and I hope nga ma parihuan ka man sa ngatong tanandara ng mga kadete nga nagakinang langgid sang support no sa ila mga pag -eskwela. Joshua's story has gone viral with more than 12,000 shares and more than a million views. Hindi na sila maguntad eskwela pa dahil nang habis ka nung akapoy sa Joshua promises to finish his studies and eventually become a seaman, a career that will eventually pull him out of poverty and help realize his child dream to travel the world. Together with cameraman Reynold Castillo, I am Adrian Prietos for GMA Regional TV. GMA Regional TV was recognized as Best Regional TV Network in Platinum Stallion Media Awards. More in this report. The 2019 Platinum Stallion Media Awards Best Regional TV Network is GMA Regional TV. The Trinity University of Asia has once again chosen GMA Regional TV as the best regional TV network during the recently concluded 2019 Platinum Stallion Media Awards. The Vice President and Head of GMA Regional TV, Mr. Oliver Victor Amoroso, received the award. Extra special who yung award this year para sa amin dahil this is the third year uh, in a row that uh, we won no? the, the award. At Meron ho kaming mga Trinitians na nakasama sa team dalawa, in fact. No? So, we're very happy. Thank you, Trinity University of Asia. The award recognized GMA Regional TV's contribution in delivering the latest information and newsworthy stories in every region, serving the community through various public service activities, and bringing world-class entertainment to Kapusos all over the Philippines. The regional TV family from the different regions, Balitang Amianan, Balitang Bisdak, 
One Western Visayas and the One Mindanao extends its gratitude to the Trinity University of Asia 2019 Platinum Stallion Media Awards for the recognition. Other GMA Network programs and personalities were also lauded during the awards night. I am John Punsoy for GMA Regional TV. Once again, we would like to thank the Trinity University of Asia for awarding GMA Regional TV as Best Regional TV during the Platinum Stallion Media Awards 2019. GMA Regional TV will continue to deliver local news that matters. Meanwhile, GMA Regional TV supports the upcoming activity dubbed as Heroes Run. That's going to be on Sunday, November 24. Be a part of Heroes Run which will be held at PMA Fort Del Pilar, Baguio City, and other provinces. You can watch this episode and more on GMA Regional TV's official YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button to get the hottest news from the regions. Kapuso, 32 days to go before Christmas. And that was the biggest and the latest from the regions. Thank you for joining us and from all of us here in North and Central Luzon. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News, where local news matters. Wala nang pera. <laughs>